This autumn, a 49.7 billion cost startup WeWork postponed its first public offering as it faced 39 billion drop in its value, getting down to under 10 billion right now at this moment. Its founder made step down CEO position and the company's largest investor SoftBank let off thousands of WeWork employees around the globe. The startup's future is under a big question now. What has gone wrong? What lessons you can learn as a business owner or entrepreneur from this WeWork failure? That's why I put my MIT hoodie and it means we'll be talking today about big IT unicorns and why they failed. Hi, my name is Dmitry Bonder and if you are first time on this channel, I'm a founder and CEO of educational company that operates in Europe and United States. And my mission together on this channel, active and friendly community who can help each other to build and run companies. So subscribe if you want to be a part of this growing community and to get your first million in business. Okay, today, guys, I will explore failures and success of WeWork, a Silicon Valley unicorn with incredible growth and incredible down case. To make my case study unbiased, I will follow the numbers to start with. WeWork experienced a rapid growth launch in 2010 with under half billion dollars investments and growing to 49 billion dollars value in just eight years. It was a really incredible success. For example, its main competitor IWG gained such growth in over 20 years of being on the market. So it's a really, really fast pace for WeWork. According to Statistica, it's a very popular website if you, if you want to find some numbers. In 2018, WeWork faced 1.8 billion annual uh, revenue, while uh, its competitors IWG reported almost uh, doubled revenue, about $3.5 billion. Despite this, WeWork largest investor decided to infuse $2 billion more in the company whereas IWG experienced lack of financing. So why did it happen? The data wouldn't look paradoxical if a deeper analysis is made. As one of the IWG top managers said in Bloomberg interview, they were in search of WeWork's secret ingredient, but couldn't find it. I was also in search of this ingredient of fast success, and I hope I found some explanations for you. So let's talk about the first secret ingredient of their success. If we look at the qualitative data without numbers, we have to witness high-level marketing and branding campaigns laid by WeWork founders. Adam Newman was an extremely, extremely charismatic and inspiring leader. Pointing the company as a tech startup, he went far beyond the, uh, the term in a designate, designing its brand. His intention to create another reality in commercial, old-school real estate industry seems to be very convincing. WeWork wasn't the company that offered a simple space for work. It offered the new generation of doing business, a new way of thinking about business. Adam was selling freedom in work style, design and cooperation. He branded office spaces as the easiest big place to bring people together. And that was not all employees uh, considered before a boring closed room with a set of technical devices and silent colleagues in it. So he tried to change the paradigm of this real estate business. Focused much on the branding, Adam didn't care of company's profit and management. This has became a challenge which led to the company's devaluation. So the first lesson learned, please take your pencil and write down. So what takeaway you can make? At least one, a charismatic leader plus big marketing budget equal success. 
at least on the initial stage of startup. But focus on a profit is a key point in the long run. Once it's obtained a certain number of employees and other stakeholders, a startup owner becomes responsible for finance control, for management building, which are essential. So please keep this in mind. Without well-managed expenses control, an ex expert team of managers branding will not work. The second secret ingredient of WeWork success – investors with unlimited money in flows. It's a cool part of the story. SoftBank pressed uh, we work a lot to expand fast, 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 move fast, try to be the best on the market. As a result, one office in New York grew into over 60 offices around the globe in just two years. Aggressive expansion complemented Adam's strong branding strategy, but it caused huge, huge profit losses. He had almost unlimited source of money from SoftBank, from Goldman Sachs and other VC funds. And I think it played a bad joke. But with the growing revenue, the company faced expenses which were much larger than what it learned. What stopped Adam to communicate these investors correctly and convince them uh, that expansion strategy was wrong? As a founder and brilliant marketer, he could speak out and disclose the real threat to SoftBank, but he didn't. In addition to overestimation of the own charisma and the brand value he created, Adam Newman began earning on his own. And uh, this eligible doing business inside business would definitely be discovered if uh, he revealed the company's financial report. Okay, so the second takeaway from this story. Multiple sources of fin funding and financing is a must for you if you want to grow like a crazy, like a bodybuilder on steroids. But a poor communication or total absence of communication between a startup founder and investor is a very, very big mistake. This leads to a different perceptions of where the company goes, what is the mission, an ultimate goal and which challenges it face or will face. It's always better to report the investor zero profit or even losses uh, as early as possible to change a strategy on time than hide the truth or even don't get interested in the finance and lose control on what is going on uh, and what is, what is going on reality. A charismatic driving leader teamed up with a down-to-earth skeptic investor is much better for startup than a single uh, branded face with no one behind. And last but not least, it seems like we work try to renovate rental office business model, but they put wrong assumption in their business model. Why do I think so? They signed long-term 10 12-year leases uh, with landlords with very substantial liabilities. But on the other hand, they signed a short-term uh, lease agreement with the tenants and startups. So can you leave this space? So you can leave this space anytime. Like, for example, I did in 2017 when I signed the lease with WeWork. But WeWork cannot escape their liabilities in the same way with landlords. So what is the takeaway from this? The takeaway, try to build your business model taking into account cash flow from a short and long-term perspective. Otherwise, you are in a big trouble when markets crash. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found some insight that you can imply in your business right now and some mistakes you can escape. I think that we work will change their business model soon or they will die. It's my guess. Anyway, my advice, try to invest the same amount of your efforts and time in every stage of your business, branding, business development, HR, uh, finance and controls. They are all essential ingredients of success, puzzles of one big picture. If you are a charismatic leader who can inspire others with the ideas and products, 
find an investor or partner if you have enough cash with a very profound and skeptical view on how business works. Value your communication and feedback at this strategy will be the only effective way uh, for, you, uh, for your business to succeed. If you are looking for some handful and easy to use template that can help you in everyday business, you can support me on a Patreon platform link in the descri description and you will have a lot of them gathered in one place. Thank you for watching this video and peace out!